This is the Minolta XD7, or the XD11, as it's known in the United States. It's a camera from the 1970s. I think it was 1977 or 8. It's a uh, manual focus camera, so this is pre autofocus. And it's a, an SLR camera, which means that you actually view the picture through the lens rather than through a, a separate window. So you can look through that piece, the glass piece at the top there, and be able to see what the lens is actually seeing. There's no screen on the back, as I say, it's analog, not digital. And there's no motor in it, so as you can see, I need to actually wind on the next piece of film. This was actually the first camera to have shutter priority and aperture priority automatic exposure modes. If you don't know what that means, don't worry, I'm actually going to explain what aperture shutter speed and what ISO are and how they relate to each other. The key concept you need to understand about photography is that to see we need light and for a camera to see and create a good picture you need to control that light. Essentially, if there's no light, there's no picture. And on the other hand, if there's too much light, then all you're going to get is a white screen. I'm sure many of you remember the days of, of film photography where, for some reason, one, one or two photos would be completely washed out white. Here's just a quick view of what you'll see through the lens with the Minolta XD7. As I mentioned, this is a manual camera in terms of manual focus. You use this ring here to, to focus manually. You can see there are some uh, guides on there which are referred to distance, so the distance the subject is away from your, your camera. You can focus all the way to infinity. This camera needs to be wound on manually, so the, uh, the film won't actually do it itself. So let's, uh, let's explore the first concept, which is shutter speed. If you think of looking at the sun, if you take a quick glance at it, you won't be blinded. But if you were to stare at it for a couple of minutes, well, I'm sure it will do some damage. It's because you're exposing your eye to too much light. Too many photons are entering that your eye and damaging your eye. What you can do with a camera is control how long you're looking at a subject. And that's called shutter speed the more light that actually enters the, the lens and exposes your film, the brighter the picture is going to be. Alternatively, if it's a very bright day, there's too much light, you can shorten that shutter speed to make sure not, not too much light gets in. You can control the shutter speed on the X-D7 just at the top here. So from one thousandth of a second all the way down to one whole second. There's also a function called bulb, which just means that if you hold it down for as long as possible, it will actually shoot for as long as you're holding it for, and then as soon as you let go of the button, it will 
close that shutter for you. The next concept we'll uh, look at is aperture. Much like your eye, which has a pupil that opens and closes to control how much light gets in, your camera has the same thing. We call that the aperture. The wider open it is, the more light that gets in. The smaller it is, the less light that gets in. Ironically, the wider or larger the aperture, the smaller the number we use to describe it. So 3.5 would be a wider aperture than 22, which is a small aperture. Let's take a look at the aperture from the lens side. I'm just going to open up the shutter on the back. As you can see, not much light is actually getting through. You can see the uh, green craft map behind. As soon as you open that aperture up, much more light gets in, exposing to much more light. Aperture actually controls the focus point to an extent. The wider open your aperture, the smaller the line of focus is going to be, the, um, the actual window for where things are, are in focus. So you can see the camera I'm filming, filming with has a very wide aperture at the moment. And it doesn't take very long for something to be out of focus by bringing my hand close to the camera. It's out of focus, a little further away, in focus, and then even further away, out of focus again. The smaller your aperture in terms of size, or larger in terms of number, the, the larger that pl plane of focus is going to be. As you can see, Whilst I have the Minato XD7 in, in focus, the lens in the background wasn't, and now I bring it closer to my hand, everything else is out of focus. Okay, so the final thing to understand is ISO. It's how sensitive your camera is to light, or your film, or your, your digital camera's sensor. If you imagine waking up in the morning, your eyes are very sensitive to light. But if you've been looking at the sun for or that you're light for a while, uh, you become used to that light. Just showing you something called exposure compensation. If you think there's your camera hasn't metered enough light or hasn't worked out how much light you need, you can say, "I need more or less." Using this. So there's some key concepts for. Photography, ISO, aperture, and shutter speed. It can take a while to get used to the concepts of uh, photography. There's a lot to take on board. But they're the three main things you'll need to understand to really know how to actually take a, a good picture. Another thing to consider is how your camera's settings, like aperture and shutter speed, affect your picture, not just in terms of light. I mentioned that aperture can change the plane of focus. Shutter speed actually has another effect, uh, which is that the longer the shutter speed, the more chance that if your subject moves, that your image will be blurry. Sometimes this is the desired effect. If you take a long exposure of, say, a river, the long exposure will smooth out that water to make it look like it's sort of misty. You can do the same at uh, a seaside and make the sea look misty. It's a very simple trick to get 
a nice picture. ISO can affect your picture in, in a negative way. The higher the ISO, the more noisy your image is. I'm sure you've taken a, a picture in low light, in the dark, and find that it's all been all grainy with all these horrible artifacts, uh, green and pink and, and yellow and speckly. Um, and that's the downside of having a high ISO. So it's finding the balance of those three items, aperture, shutter speed and ISO, so that your subject, if you want it to be you know, frozen in time and not blurry, then you need to consider shutter speed. If you want as much to be in focus as possible, you need to consider your aperture. And if you don't want it to be grainy like this final image here, then you need to consider ISO.